Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dye some 100% silk scarves with food coloring. More specifically, we are going to try to break Wilton's Violet and Wilton's Black on these just over 4 gram silk scarves. When I dye yarn with these food colorings, I usually like to use between a quarter and a half teaspoon of food coloring per 100 grams of yarn. Now, four grams of scarf is a lot less fiber, but I cannot reliably measure, you know, a 25th of a quarter teaspoon. So, we'll do our best. I pre-soaked two silk scarves in plain tap water overnight. All right, we've got our eight cups of water at a boil, and I am now going to reduce the heat to low. I am not gonna use a thermometer today, but I believe that silk is a fiber that does better at lower temperatures. If you heat them at too high of a temperature, it can sort of lose its sheen. But that's one of the reasons why I wanna just test it out at just below a boil, and we'll see how it does. Today, I am going to be using the ever scientific <laughs> coating a knife with a little bit of the Wilton's Violet um, because I had to open a new vial anyway. So we're just using a knife full and we'll see how intense of a color we can get. Now the one other thing that we need is we need to have some acid on hand because if we don't add acid, then the food coloring will not bind to the scarf. And the acid that I like to use in my dyeing experiments is some white vinegar, just some standards distilled white vinegar. Now, frequently I will add the vinegar to the pot and then afterwards I will start I'll add the dye right before I'm ready to start dip dyeing. But since I was using a fork full, or I guess a knife tip full of dye, I decided to do this a bit in reverse. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar to our pot, stir it up, and we're about to start dip dyeing. Wilton's Violet has red number three in it, and this is a food coloring color that does not like a lot of acid and can start crashing out. So with our scarf, I have wrung out a lot of the water, but it's still like shiny and wet. And I am just gonna start dip dyeing it. Now, and you can see some pink is binding. I have no idea, and it's starting to stick to itself. This is very, very thin. So I have no idea how much acid will be required to do this. I have no idea how much color it'll take up, but I am slowly, slowly dip dyeing this. And you can see over time we are getting, it might be a little hard to see on camera. Let me, there we go. But slowly we are getting a bit of an ombre of the pink at least on here. <laughs> Come on, open up. So usually if I was using yarn, I would be a lot further along right now in terms of the color uptake. And actually, this is starting to look semi-purple. So I need to remember to, you know, as I go slowly and more and more, and we'll see if we get some breaking and start to see some blue. But when I'm sort of observing is that we haven't quite hit a blue yet, but we've got this really cool purple with some pink at the top. Our food coloring, huh, interesting. Instead of starting to read, I'm gonna just open this back up. Our food coloring, instead of starting to read more blue, which is something that I am used to, when we use wool, we're starting to see it look, it's looking purplish. So I am curious 
if this means that our breaking is going to work differently on silk than wool. So slowly dipping more and more and so see this color is I'm not seeing that bright blue that we're that we're used to getting. This is a very very pretty scarf but interesting. That is so cool. I've never tried I've never even tried Wilton's Violet on silk hankies or anything yet. So I am going to go ahead and add, well, let's keep dip dyeing for a little longer, I suppose. Let's see if we get bluer. I mean, it's also possible that we've got the pinks binding nicely and that we might need to add more vinegar for the blues to really start to bind. Because you'll see that we definitely, we definitely have a nice ombre of pinks around here. So we just might really end up needing more vinegar. Yeah, because when I, the bits that I'm dipping towards the end, I don't really want to let that last bit of white get in, but oh, that's so pretty. Of course, I know this will lighten a lot while it while it dries, but I'm sort of like holding on to that last bit. <laughs> I guess the last bit will, it'll either be white or maybe we'll start to see um, if we get more blues. I mean, this also is looking purple versus magenta that we see with breaking Wilton's violet on wool. So now I am getting more and more curious about what other colors might do with this silk. Because, yeah, I, I can't believe I haven't tried Wilton's Violet on any kind of silk before. But, you know, our purple is getting darker and darker on our silk scarf. but it's really reading much, much more of a purple than a pink. And there is still, like if I was gonna add some, eek. If I was gonna add some, <laughs> just opening this back up. Um, if I was gonna add some wool to the pot. I think that the colors, the rest of this color would shoop up really, really quickly. But this is not what I expected at all. I've got a deeper purple and then white at the other end. So the food coloring is definitely, definitely binding to the silk. But one of the things that prompted me to even start trying this and sort of playing around with this was that someone shared with me a dip dyeing experiment they did where they dip dyed two different yarn mixes into the pot at one time. One of the, let's see, there was a mixture, uh, one was just, you know, superwash merino, and then the other one was a mixture of alpaca, silk, and wool. And you got two completely different colorways. So that made me really, really confused curious about what these would do with silk. Okay. It's been, you know, well over five minutes. Um, it's been close to eight minutes since this, this filming started. So I'm going to go ahead and add, this is looking bluer now, actually. Yeah, it's still sort of purplish, but it's definitely bluer. I am going to add some more vinegar to the pot. I'm going to add an additional two tablespoons. Stir this up. And we are gonna start dip dyeing our scarf again. I'm gonna sort of open it up a bit. I mean, the scarf is pretty thin, so I don't think it folding in on itself makes a huge, huge deal, but just in case. Do, do, do. 
dipping in towards that top. Now I could just add the entire scarf to the pot, but the reason why I am not, and I'm just continuing to dip it, is that the color is kind of coming onto the scarf really slowly. And so if I was going to put the whole thing in the pot right now, you know, maybe we would not see as much of our ombre as we are getting currently, and maybe we instead would see something that almost looked more of a solid color. But I like, you know, this difference that we have between the ends. And since I added more vinegar, um, we are getting a progressively darker color. But, yeah, nothing like, you know, I haven't gotten anything that really looks, that really looks blue yet. So, I think that, you know, when we talk about food coloring colors binding in different rates, I think that that's something that probably applies a lot more to um, wool than other fibers. And so, if you're going to be looking at things that aren't wool, then maybe you want to start with like a mini skein or a swatch or something. There's still a lot of color left in there. And it is relatively bluish, but this is definitely, I mean, I wouldn't call this a pink. We've definitely, definitely got a purple on our scarf. I'm setting it aside for a moment to get a piece of paper towel to see, okay, the amount of color that is in here is not registering when I dip the paper towel in. So there's not a ton, I mean, there wasn't a lot of food coloring in there to begin with, but I guess I just, oops, sort of have to keep going. Um, I know that this will not be anywhere near as dark when, when it dries. So maybe at this point after, you know, probably 10 minutes, of dipping in and out. I think at this point I will go ahead and add an ah, it might be bluish. If you look at the scarf in the water, that almost looks a little bluish. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in here. We are on the lowest heat setting, so the heat isn't off entirely, but I'm gonna let this go for 10 minutes and we will see where we are in terms of the amount of color that is left. And actually, hooking up the tablespoon right now, that is very little color, but if you look in the pot, you can still see a fair amount of color. So, 10 minutes, we'll come back. 10 minutes have passed, and there's still a lot of dye in the pot. Um, however, clearly our white end is taking up some color that is bluer oof, than what is on the other side. I mean, it's paler, but it also does feel overall less pink. Um, so I am actually going to turn off the heat on this pot and push this to another burner so it can cool while in the pot. And I think that I might end up separating these into two different videos, but we will try to look and see what happens with some black Wilton's food coloring. Our cooling scarf has taken up a lot of color in this end, and our dye bath finally is seeing that turquoise color that we know and love. But, and it's warm, but I can still stick my hand in. Clearly we have a bluer end and a pinker end. So I would say that we have broken Wilton's Violet. And these shades are a lot closer to what I am used to seeing. It just happens in a much, 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 much slower way. All right, um, the pot is still warm, but it has cooled considerably. And look at these colors. I wonder if the, there's still a lot of blue and, well, this is not very much blue, but the blue that's left is bright. I think all of the reds have bound to our scarf, but actually this has cooled off pretty quickly in my hands. So I'm now going to take this and we are gonna wash out any excess dye. 
Okay, here is our scarf, and we definitely, definitely have some breaking, even if it is a little less dramatic than what we see with, with wool yarn. So what I'm curious about is if we will see any color bleeding coming from the scarf. And maybe we're getting a hint of blue in the water, but just the barest hint. I'm not planning on using any soap as I wash this scarf. I'm just gonna rinse it a couple times and then hang it up to dry and show you what our scarf looks like. Ooh, there is no question that we have broken Wilton's Violet food coloring on this 100% silk scarf. The colors are really, really vibrant. We've got this magenta pink, a medium purple in the center, and then a blue at the other end. It is a palish blue. It's not as bright as we sometimes get on our wool yarn, but it is blue nevertheless, and there is a big difference in tone between the pink and the blue ends. So I think that this is actually a really, really pretty scarf. I expected the colors to brighten or to lighten a bit as it dried, but they're actually really saturated and intense. So I am really, really impressed with these colors. I mean, if you compare it to this tag, which didn't take any color um, that was the uh, similar color to the original undyed silk, you can see just how much color we added to these fibers. I think that we learned some really important things in this experiment. We learned that absolutely you can dye silk with food coloring, but silk absorbs the food coloring a lot slower than wool. And so that's something to keep in mind as you are preparing your own dyeing projects. The reds still absorbed the silk at a faster rate than the blue. So we were able to see the breaking of the Wilton's Violet. So this scarf is a woven fabric made out of silk threads that are really, really tiny and you know, presumably have been spun really tightly as well. So I'm not sure if the fact that this is a woven fabric versus a yarn makes a difference in how the fibers will absorb the dye. These scarves came from Dharma Trading Company, which is a dyer supplier. So they're bare silk with the intent to be dyed. But I don't know, you know, if raw silk fiber that hasn't been spun yet takes up color faster than something that has been more processed like this scarf. I look forward to doing more dyeing adventures with silk and with wool silk blends. And I hope that you are excited to see these too. If you wanna see more fun dyeing experiments, make sure you subscribe to the Cabinet Tutorials YouTube channel. I mostly dye wool yarns, but I am branching out into other fiber types, and so I hope that you will come along and experience these new things with me. Thank you so much for watching.